Hello, my name is Carlos Porfio Ortiz, and this is the debut episode of the Gasly Media Podcast. This is our pre-E3 and our debut episode, so first, uh, before we get our discussion started, I'd like to explain a bit about our show. Our goal is to give you a new episode about once per month, uh, with extra installments created around the industry's biggest gaming events, E3, CES, the VGAs. Uh, our purpose is to voice our views on the gaming industry, anime, other entertainment-related topics, and we aim to give our group guns of the hell gas to voice. To that end, let's get our introductions underway. Joining me tonight, we have the recorder of our show, Tim, the Asian. Hey, how Okay, you? our editor, Gabriel. Hi. Our first PlayStation MVP and gaming guru, Gamer. Hey, and Trunks, the hardcore gamer and musical uh, maestro. Yo, what's up, what's up, what's up? First off, Gabriel, why don't you tell us a bit about who you are and a little about Guns to the Hell Gas. <clears throat> Alright, what's up everybody? Uh, anyways, uh, I am the chief commander, founder, person of uh, the community C. Uh, pretty much has been elaborating on all these uh, awesome events and stuff activities, projects. Um, we've done a lot uh, within these past years. We've been around, what, it's going to be our fifth year pretty much operating as a group, so this is really exciting. This is our second time that we have a team going to a, a E3, so this is, you know, we really do cherish, the whole team here does. So being able to, like, put together this community, you know, it's uh, definitely been something very, very meaningful. An awesome, definitely an awesome chapter, and uh, still a lot more uh, books ahead to be written. So, anyways, uh, the point of this podcast would be uh, a voice for Guns of the Hell Gas. Uh, this is something that we want to try to get out there, uh, where we can actually hear the community, take questions, reply back to them, uh, get more involved, and at the same time, uh, there's a lot of new stuff coming out this C3 2014. And uh, we want to answer a lot of these questions. So, uh, with that being said, you know we will be having Tim going this year uh, over to E3, and he's going to be carrying those questions uh, with him, you know with him. And uh, pretty much, yeah, he's going to be the astronaut for this journey. Uh, last year, we were lucky enough to go. Uh, Nick and I were able to uh, head over there, which is pretty, uh, was pretty awesome. So, Gamer 316 shoutouts. And but yeah, anyways. Uh, that's it. I mean, want to pass the torch. Cool, cool. Gamer, how about you? Tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of what to say. Uh, been, basically, as I was introduced, I'm a player of PlayStation MVP. I've been an MVP for about two years, I believe. And, you know, I've been on playing PlayStation ever since since the, the PS1 late in the PA PS1 life cycle life cycle um, and you know I'm I'm I've been around around home for for a while I started off as a home guide and I'm like uh, right, right now I'm you know trophy tro- tro- hunt, hunting a lot current currently as we're recording this I'm playing NBA 2K14 on the PS4 and uh, yeah it's a little bit about me. Gaming during the podcast. Always gaming. <laughs> Alright. Well, what about you, Trends? Uh, for me, I think it's just, uh, I'm a simple man. I don't really do much. But when I do it, I put 100% in all the time, 110% most of the time. Um, <laughs> basically, just. I kid come from the East Coast, love playing games, been playing since I was a Nintendo gamer. Still am, but, you know, PS3 and PS4, basically Sony systems are my uh, console choice. And uh, just here trying to make the podcast team more lively because we got a bunch of old men in here now. <laughs> so, you know, got to liven it up a little bit. So, um, yeah, I don't really game that much, but when I do, I'm usually a beast at it, so don't mean to my own horn, but, you know, see me on that 2K gamer. That is. Mm-hmm. Call it out. <laughs> 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 I 
time. And Jaden, Mr. Jaden, must be very excited about going to E3 this year. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, so uh, I'm Jin or Tim the Sexy Asian Man, and I will be going to E3 2014, which is awesome, because, yay, I get to go to California, and I get a week off work. And they get to run around there for a while to see what's going on, what else is happening in the gaming world. And let's see, a little bit about me, I guess. I started out playing games when I was a kid, and I played Mario and Link, and then from there I started playing the Mortal Kombat, and played Metroid 3 and then I got a PS1 with the little flip screen deal that was pretty cool I got that and I started playing Final Fantasy 8 and I really got into RPGs and stuff like that and then I started playing some other FPS I did play Call of Duty for a little while and then I got bored of it and started playing Killzone 3 and yeah. Anime Nights where I actually started playing Killzone 3 because my friend Orga so from there I think I kind of branched out and had a bunch of ideas and I was like hey I'm gonna do this and they're like okay let's do that so I did that for a while and then I took over the editing and whatnot for Gasly Studios, and I've been doing that for about a year or so. Maybe a little less than about six months, maybe. Yeah. And that's also writing articles on the website, which actually what helped me become an MVP. So, oh. yeah. Nice. <laughs> And that's Did where I am today. Congratulations on your MVP status and congratulations on getting to go to E3 this year. <laughs> Very good stuff. Thank Suns you. Suns is already you. gone. Gamer's gone. So we're getting some people out there. Good stuff. Thanks, sir. Yeah, but pretty <laughs> soon we'll, we'll have a goth E3 alumni. <laughs> <laughs> that's the goal. <laughs> My name is Carlos Ortiz. Uh, future episodes will probably just go by the name Orfeo. Uh, my PSN ID is Lord underscore Orfeo in case anyone wants to send me some invites. Uh, I've been gaming since the NES. I would consider myself as having become a gamer with the PSX, the original Sony Gray Box. Um, Final Fantasy VII, amazing game. Uh, my first game that I can remember was Duck Hunt on the NES, so <laughs> I've been with it for a long time. I hate that dog, <laughs> uh, but I love the game. My favorite gaming genre is pure adventure, what I like to call pure adventure. Games are equal parts mind candy and eye candy, like Mist or Eco. My favorite game series, Devil May Cry, Final Fantasy, Legacy of Cain, Monster Hunter. Um, being that we're called Guns of the Hellgas, that's the, the club we're all affiliated with. Uh, I also greatly enjoy the Killzone series, Killzone 3 being my favorite installment. Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, and we are all, as I said, members of Guns of the Hellgas, great PlayStation Home community that goes beyond just PlayStation Home, but into organized game nights. Uh, podcast as we're recording this episode. Uh, our blog, find us at gunsthehellgas.com. You'll find us through social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, hit us up. YouTube. YouTube. Uh, <laughs> head and watch some of our stuff. Uh, get back to us. Let us know how we're doing. 
ways you think we could improve, or if you feel like joining us, go ahead and uh, click the enlistment button on the blog. So now we're moving right into the main meat of the podcast here. Since this is our pre E3 episode, let's get to some E3 predictions. Now we know first up from the schedule is going to be Microsoft's press conference. So any ideas about what Microsoft is going to do to try and recuperate from last year's showing? <laughs> TV. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess I'll take this one first. Uh, since I've been watching Microsoft a little closely these past few months, um, I expect Microsoft to come out and do what Microsoft does. And what Microsoft does is throw money at a bad situation. That's what they've been led to do, that's what they've been trained to do, and that's what they've always done. When the Xbox wasn't doing so bad, they put out games. When the 360 started to fail, at the end of the life cycle and not do as well as it should have finished up the uh, life cycle strong enough, they threw out, you know, some games for gold. Now, if you like those games, it's up to you, but they do throw money in what they need to. With this E3 conference, I predict that we see a Halo 5 Xbox One bundle, and I predict that we get two new IPs from Microsoft and then maybe, if they're smart, they will lower Xbox Live Gold's price. Because um, the reason why I say all this stuff, a lot of people might be out there like, oh, no, Microsoft is always going to be, be like, and they're always going to remain an evil empire, right? Um, I don't think so. I think Microsoft is in a transitional period. I think they're starting to smarten up. I don't think they turn over a new leaf. I just think they're starting to smarten up. And by that, I mean... When it comes to looking at the market, the sales that they've done on the Xbox One compared to the PlayStation 4, it's poor. And they're not used to, in the last, I think, seven years, being almost the last place console. I think they are the last place console right now. Uh, someone can correct me on that. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah and I think what they're going to do is they're going to start to just go out there on that E3 stage and they're going to give us the Halo 5 bundle with the Xbox One that will generate some sales and two new IPs, and hopefully they lower the price on Xbox Live Gold because they're in the transitional period, like I said. They can get the gamers back. The people who switched over to PS4 because they were just so done with all the antics that Microsoft made them go through the whole DRM, this is their chance to say, hey, look, we messed up, we effed up, we know, and... We're here to correct it and give you all what you loved about Xbox 360. Now, there might be very few things that I love about the Xbox 360, but there were just absolute people who adored it. And if they can give them back that feeling with actual value for what they're buying, then I don't see how Microsoft comes out of this E3 without giving some substantial things to their audience. Some good points. The lowering of the live. You know, I would have said no in the past, but yeah. from the, these past few weeks, Microsoft has done a lot. I mean, Microsoft's been doing a lot since the announcement of the system at E3 with the, uh, the backtracking on DRM, the backtracking of always online. Uh, now they've taken out video services from behind their paywall. Took out the connect. Yeah, they <laughs> took They lowered the price on the Xbox One. Mm -hmm. So it seems like they really are trying to match Sony part and parcel. I mean, games of gold, that's another example. So them dropping price to, say, maybe 50 bucks a year to match PSN Plus's price, I can see that. Mm -hmm. the, the thing is, even by doing all of that, I mean, from a hardcore perspective, and I'll address the casual in a second, but from the hardcore perspective, yes, they're matching Sony. That is good. But you can't match Sony. You have to best Sony. Because Sony's already got that foothold. They've already got that larger install base. What are you going to do? You, if you want to you know, fight back, you know, you're offering two games per month with uh, games with gold. Sony's offering their two games. Go three. Go four. You want people to be more interested in your online service? Instead of 
being priced at 60 and cutting it to 50, cut it to 40. Or, you know, keep it at 50, but give those extra games. Um, or let people yeah. keep those games. Or take multiplayer out from behind the paywall. That would be a very interesting decision. Um, now, one, one, one small small difference about, about uh, game, games for gold on the Xbox is uh, even if you, you don't have an uh, Xbox Live anymore, you get to keep those games forever. Uh, that's mm-hmm. like that's like the one thing they have up on PS Plus, but that but still even way with that that's really small. I mean, with with all three systems PS4, PS3, PS Vita, we get two games on the PS4, three games on the PS3, and two games on the Vita. So we we got more uh, options. You got more bang for your buck. Uh, that's that's not even debatable. The thing that is plaguing games for gold right now that not a lot of people are talking about. <laughs> Is the just how old the games are? Um, that's probably, possibly like the biggest gripe I have with games for gold is the fact that the games are literally almost five years old. They're like going back to almost launch titles for the Xbox 360, and it's pretty alarming because for the PS4, we've had a game that was severely. Um, critique on there. A lot of people love Outlet. Uh, severely love game on uh, the PC. It came to PS4 and now we're getting the DLC on there I think PS Plus as well. And that's a new game that just came out in 2013. I think uh, I think it came out in March. I don't know what it's called. But you see on the Xbox Live games for gold, they have Gears of War 1. Not even Gears of War Judgment, but possibly the worst performing Gears of War that they've ever had. They give you Gears of War 1, which is in the freaking like clearance bin in a GameStop. That's terrible. They're giving you Crackdown 1. When Crackdown 2 sold, it sold moderately well, but still, Crackdown 2 was out, and that came out 2012 or 2011, and you can't give them that. I think the biggest thing that Microsoft fans will be looking for at this E3 is, is Microsoft going to reinforce them with actual uh, actual value, actual substance. Because, let me ask you all here, this is a question I pose to everyone. Um, with the price drop right now, and with everything that they've done, is Microsoft right now in a good enough shape to get your money? Like, son, would you buy one? Nick, would you buy one? Um, Jen, would you buy one? No. I want that oh. yes for it. <laughs> cool, right? See, I'm saying. Yeah. So I already I have think, a PS4, I, so. Yeah, no. And we're all unbiased here. If, if, if the games are good, the games are good. But there's not enough incentive right now to want to get uh, Microsoft Xbox One. Everyone's looking forward to the PS4 because Sony has shown us in the past that they're all about quality over quantity. They're all about putting out those great games. But the thing is, they have a quantity and a quality. So last generation, we had so many games. And I think, um, shout out to Blackbuster Critic on YouTube, he did a video where he showed the disparity between the PS3 and the Xbox 360's um, games on Metacritic that were rated 70 and above. And I believe the PS3 almost had 100 more games rated 70 and above exclusively to their system than the Xbox 360. So you look at that shock, that alarming stat, that has to be fixed in this generation, and I think that Microsoft is going to fix it. This race is going to be very much closer than people think it is. Yes, in terms of sales, it may be too far gone for Microsoft to outclass Sony, but that didn't stop Sony last generation from outclassing Microsoft in the fans' eyes because they put out the game, and that's all we care about right now is the games and how well it sells. But most importantly, any fan cares about the quality of their games over any numbers or state or sales, so yeah. Well, I can see the games with gold improving. Microsoft has announced recently, and I could be wrong about this, but I think I'm right, that they've argued one of the reasons the games on the Xbox One through this service weren't quite on par with Sony's offerings is because of the fact that if you don't keep your subscription to... uh, Xbox Live Plus, or Xbox Live Gold, excuse me, that you get to keep those games. Whereas with Plus, if you stop paying, you lose access. So, 
now they they're going ahead and saying that on 360 that policy is remaining the same but with xbox one once your subscription lapses that's it you lose access to those games and because of that they're going to be able to bring newer games fresher games to games with gold on xbox one so i think you you are gonna yeah you are gonna see that that quality increase and I was talking earlier about us hardcore gamers. Yeah, I think a lot of us are still wanting or already have the PS4. But when it comes to the casual consumer, if they're walking in the store for the first time and they're going to buy a system, if it's a parent going to buy a system for a little kid or if it's someone who's not really into gaming and they want to buy something for a, a fiancé or a close friend, then they may skew Xbox. Because if the big differentiator between the two is apparently TV, then... You know, if someone watches TV regularly, they might want to skew more towards that way. Like, oh, I can integrate with their cable box. That's pretty cool. You know, I think the more tech savvy you are, the more gamer you are, you may not necessarily do that because you're probably watching Netflix, Hulu Plus, Crackle, Amazon Instant Video. You don't really, not too many people that I know personally watch TV anymore. But, um, you know, that is definitely a feature that Microsoft has with the mm-hmm. HDMI password that Sony doesn't. Mm-hmm. So for the casual consumer, that may be something they're legitimately interested in. And now that it's the same price point as a PS4, they may skew that way. So I think Microsoft has that market, but the question is, will that market be big enough? Mm-hmm. So I think from Microsoft, we're... I agree with you. We're probably going to see a Halo. I think a Halo 5 bundle is brilliant. I could definitely see them doing that. Maybe a Halo 2 anniversary. I think that's been talked about. Yeah. Uh, despite criticism that Microsoft has faced regarding their TV antics, I can see the, the Halo TV series being a topic of discussion. Maybe they'll show yeah. something more on that, some live-action footage. Uh, Forza Horizon 2, I believe, is on the way. There has been a rumor that Fallout 4 is going to be an exclusive, whether it's full or timed. Probably oh, hell no. It is. Yeah, that rumor's out there. It's going to be an Xbox One serious? exclusive. Yep. Yo, that would, that would be huge. For my, you realize that the amount of Fallout fanboys that there are, like, people just will not question Fallout. It's amazing, regardless of what people say. Oh, the story's white. No. Oh, people will buy oh. Fallout. Technically, I mean, technically, it's probably going to be on PC. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. This, that's Microsoft's little trick. You know, it's console exclusive. <laughs> yeah, well, well, their definition of exclusive is usually yeah. not on PlayStation. Or, or, or <laughs> time, or time yeah. exclusive. Just like time. Well, just like, just like <laughs> Bioshock. You know, many games were exclusive on like, Xbox. Uh, Fable 3. I mean, it's... Oh, Fa- no, Fable was Fable created games. by Microsoft Studios. But the dude Mass said, Effect. Mass yeah. Effect. Ninja Gaiden 2. Um, Those are the yeah. examples. Their the party, one, their party the games, bro. Sorry, man. Is, um, it's Left 4 like Dead. Left 4 Dead. People think Left 4 Dead is only on the Xbox, but yeah. people forget that. I'm sorry. I don't care. No one says the best version of Left 4 Dead is hands down on, on the PC. Until you can mod your, your level and invite as many people as you want and build a freaking castle out of zombie bodies, you haven't lived. I'm, I'm sorry. So... <laughs> Uh, you know, like it's it's all a matter of um, it's all a matter of what they do with this E3. This is a very big E3 coming up, and I'm pretty sure you all agree that this can very much sway the, the tide for any system. Sony is in a position to just completely overkill the competition, just leave everyone in their, in their dust. Microsoft is in a position to equalize, and even though Nintendo's not up there this year, they're still in a position. They're still in a position to announce a bunch of games and at least, you know, attract some attention from the blog. Because as much as people want to say that Nintendo has no audience right now, they'll still get some people. If they if they come out and they announce a Metroid, I think they'll be all right. But, but we're talking about Microsoft right now. And I agree with everything y'all said, but the biggest thing that is going to decide this is their policies, man. I'm, I think that that's going to be a very big thing for them. And I'm getting bored talking about Microsoft right now, but, um, you know, because I, I, I have to see. I hate talking about what I think Microsoft is going to do because whenever I think they're about to do something, they do the complete opposite. When I thought they, they were, they were going to lower the uh, gold, they raised it two years ago. When I thought that they were going to come out with a new Halo from Bungie, 
Bungie said they weren't doing it anymore, and they gave it to the 3 industry. So, I mean, come on, man. Like, it's at this point, this is a very big issue for Microsoft, and they have to come with it, man. They have to. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you. Nintendo's more on my radar than Microsoft, because in the end, it's about games. True. Microsoft mm-hmm. doesn't. I don't know how many games Microsoft does have. I, there's more games I recognize more on Nintendo than Microsoft. Mm-hmm. So in the end, when it comes down to games, uh, Microsoft is kind of barely a bleep on my radar. <laughs> I'm looking for more on Nintendo stuff than All right, so like, so. let's roll on to Nintendo. Yeah. What do you foresee coming out of Nintendo this E3? Yes, they're not gonna, or no, they're not going to have a press conference, but they are going <clears> to <throat> have their Nintendo Direct event, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of media coverage on that end. So, what do you see coming from them? New yeah, Smash Brothers character. I, 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 I don't know what else comes from this. So I don't pay attention to these. <laughs> I, I, love, I love Smash. One of my favorite, top favorite series on Nintendo. Yeah, Smash Brothers is supposed to be coming to both the 3DS and the Wii U. So, um, that's going to get a lot of interest. Nintendo, the enigma of the new generation. Um, we look at Nintendo right now, and... We see a company that's flailing in the water. We see a company that doesn't know what it wants to do. And we see a company that has lost a lot of its audience due to its too overly complicated, oversimplified hardware and their underdeveloped software. So, um, Nintendo, man, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do at their little floor show. I think they're going to have like a, a whole floor covered, really. Um, there's not going to be that many other people out there because Nintendo is the biggest company out of any of those people on the floor. And what I expect for them to do and what I want for them to do is two different things because I've been watching Nintendo's conferences for the past few years. And one thing that is always a word that comes to mind with Nintendo is its inevitable unpredictability. And every year you think Nintendo's going to do the smart thing. You think they're going to come out and they're going to do what every fan wants them to do. I mean, for Jesus, man, for God's sake, they came out at the VGAs with an announcement that freaking Cranky Kong is going to be a playable character on Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. Like, 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 that was supposed to be the biggest news we've ever heard in our entire life. Like, oh, is there a Cranky Kong? No, that announcement is a joke. And yeah. any, any Nintendo fan who tells you that they were not mad at that is lying to themselves and needs to go convert to a new system because they're lying to themselves. I would have traded in my Wii U the next day if I had a Wii U and I saw that the Reginator, Reggie... I don't know the guy's last name. He went up there and was like, we have a new announcement to make to you. We are very proud to announce that the Cranky Kong is a playable character. No, bro, that's not a good announcement. On the main stage, the, the BGX Awards were the number one most streamed event in 10 years online. That's a fact. And you come out there and you say Cranky Kong. So back to the E3. What I expect them to do with E3 is two different things from what I want them to do. What I want them to do is I want them to go out there and give us a new Metroid. I want a new Star Fox. I want a new Smash Brothers character. I want, I want some new IP. I want them to announce a huge firmware update for the Wii U to update their online. I want them to regulate their policies on their children being online. I want them to regulate their policies for the adult online. But they won't do that. Nintendo will go out there. They'll give us their old faithful exclusive. They'll, they'll probably get, give us a new Mario Galaxy 3. If that hasn't already come out yet, I don't know if it has. They'll come out there. They'll give us, you know, a new a, a Luigi. You know, some more classic, you know, Reginator type of stuff. They'll give us the 3DS uh, specs. And they'll announce a few new games. And by new games, I mean basically the same character in each game. But I don't want them to do that. I want Nintendo to be successful because if Nintendo is successful, that pushes Sony to do their best. If Nintendo is failing in the water, it's not good for the competition. I want Nintendo to go out there and kill it. I want them on their floor show to say, we're committed 
to our gamer, and we're going to try to bring in a new audience. They're too one-fitted, and they were too underprepared for this new generation. And if you're wondering what I mean by underprepared, I mean, when you look at the Wii, the Wii was the craziest of them. You couldn't see it in the store until maybe a year in. That's how freaking amazing the sales were for it. But that's because the technology was so new and so franchised for, you know, so syndicatedly franchised for everyone out there who hadn't ever seen the technology. The masses had never seen motion control. Yes, I know everyone who might be a huge Sony fan thinks that, oh, Sony did that with the, with the PSI. Yes, they did, but it wasn't as marketed. And Nintendo took advantage of Sony's misfortune, and they flipped numbers on it, and they made profit. But you look at the Wii U, it's a tablet. There's nothing separating it from the competition. The Wii had everything separating it from the competition. There was nothing out there that had motion controls. There was nothing out there that was just marketed. There was nothing out there who was supported by Oprah, Ellen, Jimmy Fallon, all those people who are saying that this was the next big thing. And they had games for it. They weren't hardcore. A lot of them weren't, but they did have some that people could get behind. You the Red Steel 2s, the Red Steel, the, um, whatchamacallit, the, 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 the No More Heroes, all those games. So my prediction for Nintendo is I expect for Nintendo to mess up something. But I also expect them to announce two new games. And I expect for the fans to be pretty lukewarm on what their conference is going to be. Even though they aren't having one, it's basically a conference because they're going to be live streaming it. So their Nintendo Direct uh, for so I expect for them to have a pretty middle of the road uh, conference. Dude, I don't know, man. That Nintendo Direct stuff, dude. Like, I... Dude, it's almost like something created with fillers. It's all this, like, it's very cinematic, trying to make it, like, look like if it's a, some type of TV show or something. Dude, I don't know, man. Like, everything, when I watch Nintendo Direct, it's all so staged. Everything there is staged. Like, I, I don't know why they're doing that. I mean, I don't, I actually want to see the games being played live. I mean, if the game has a hiccup, I want to know about it. You know, I understand if there's, like, you know, last E3, a bunch of games are freezing up. And yeah, it's because of dev kits and stuff. And a lot of those games are still working titles. You know, they're still working on it. But, you know, I don't know. I prefer seeing to see, like, you know, the actual progression of stuff. I like to see the, uh, you know, I mean, if there is something wrong with it, hey, you know, I kind of want to know about it. Did you fix that yet? You know, with Nintendo, it's like, nah, now everything's being staged. And it's like, <laughs> you're, make, you're only showing us what you want to see. Like what are you, what are you hiding? Like what's going on? I don't know. It seems kind of shady. Like I mean, you got these companies who would actually go ahead, face on a live audience, demonstrating what they've been working on. This is the product that you know we want you to be interested in buying, and you know this is something that you know we want the consumer to be interested in investing in. You know, Nintendo's not doing that. They're they're doing this TV show kind of thing, off stage. You know, it's like, I don't know, it's like, you know, you're releasing a lot of stuff, and you're trying to push the Wii U, but, like, there's nothing on the Wii U. Like, I, Nintendo dominates the handheld market. That's, that's a, that's a obvious, dude. I mean, they've been butter. doing it, yeah, they've been doing it for, I mean, the longest, like, the most experience at that, you know. And, you know, they, yeah, they're, they're pretty solid at that, you know, that, mad props. But, on their console market... You know, dude, they, they're starving, dude. I mean, they're starving. I mean, and the consumers, and they keep pushing it. Like, yeah, dude, you want to buy this product, and now they don't even put it on stage anymore, like, live. Now it's like a, uh, it's kind of like this stage show. Hey, you might be interested in this. And, like, they, they have all this scripted stuff they're playing, and it's like, dude, I don't know. Um... Last E3, yeah, Nintendo was on the floor, but they didn't have any press conference. Uh, you know, I, I saw a lot of stuff. Mainly the things I was seeing was pretty much uh, handheld games and, and HD remakes. But there's nothing that I'm seeing, like, 
you know, for the Wii U that would want me to invest into the console itself. You know, I'm more into the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm more, I'm more interested in like the handheld stuff. But even, even then, like the handheld stuff is made very casual. Like I'm already, dude, I, I mean, it was cool when I was a kid growing up. I loved it. But when I got, as I got older, you know, I wanted something more competitive. You know, Smash Brothers is awesome, but you know now they're dumbing down, they're slowing down Smash Brothers to make it more appealing to a younger audience, and they're listening more to the younger fan base. And the thing is that yo, you know, as we play games, we get better. We want something more challenging. You know, I mean, Melee, Super Smash Brothers Melee was like one of the best. It was fast, it was fast paced. They had all that. You know, I mean, it was definitely one of those games that can go back to. It's a release title and everything. Go back to it. Was, dude, that that game was spot on. I loved it. You know, but now it's like, it's I don't know, man. It's like they're taking stuff away from it. They're not paying attention to like the you know Nintendo's actual fans. It's like, hey, dude, you know, you gotta you gotta back this up. You gotta back up the core gamers too, man. Like, I mean, understand that we're the ones that are gonna keep buying this franchise, investing with this franchise. But once we grow out of it, I mean, you're you're aiming at this audience that's gonna. I mean, they're they're growing, dude. Mm-hmm. And once they grow up, guess what? When they can't, I mean, when, you know, they're, they're not being freaking nourished properly, bro, they're going to head to the next the next provider, bro, and that's going to be either PlayStation or Xbox. I mean, they offer more competitive games. And, you know, Nintendo's trying to get that competitive. I mean, they, they released that Wii U, you know, dual analog. You know, we're going to, like, try to, like, get their party support. And, you know, they did that, but they messed up again. It's like... You, you release the a system that's bringing out last gen games, and it's supposed to be like a next gen console. They messed well, up again. Me they're one they're one generation behind. Dude. Well, let, let me ask you this, ask you this man. Yeah. Um, what would Nintendo need to do? Let's say that next month you got a thousand dollars to do anything that you want with games. Yeah. Um, what would Nintendo need to do for? Tons of hell game to say, you know what, man? I have to buy one. This is not even a freaking, it's not even a debate. I have to get a Wii U. What would they have to do for someone who says they've grown out of what Nintendo's offering? How would they be able to bring you back in? I mean, number one, like, I hate, I can't stand when, like, companies try to force things on you. Like, when they try to force a peripheral on you, that's one of the main reasons why I didn't support the Wii. When they try to push that Wii mode, I was like, nah, dude. You know, honestly, it's it's cute and all. It's, it's yeah, motion control gaming. But when you're forcing that that peripheral on people, I mean, you know what? I was closed-minded to it. I tried the PS Move. The PS Move, and you know, in the end, worked pretty well. But overall, you know, I still want the gamepad. And the thing with the Wii U is that you got this big tablet thing. I use I use the Wii U, bro. Like I, I picked that thing up and I was like, dude, what is this? Like it's, I mean, it's a lunch tray, dude. Like, <laughs> I, like I, I don't I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this thing. Like, um, honestly, bro, like they're, like I don't know, man. Nintendo always does that. They always release, like, the worst, the most awkward controllers ever. They started it ever since, like, what, Sony left them, and they went up to make the PlayStation back in the Super Nintendo era, and then when, you know, uh, Nintendo went ahead and made their first system without Sony, was N64, they came out with a ridiculous controller with three handlebars and shit. (laughs) Like, dude, how you hold this? Classic. But, yeah, like, I don't know, man. It's just, like, it all started there, dude. GameCube's controller was all right. You know, that was all right. You know, you can see Nintendo was all like, oh, damn, you know, Sony was pretty smart with that dual analog thing. Let's kind of like sneak in yeah. an extra analog, but not call it, a, let's call it a thief stick. <laughs> you know, let's not really make it look like an analog. And then later on, they just kind of like phased it in and like, yeah, now we got dual analog. Yeah, Nintendo, I don't Nintendo's too proud, bro. They got that samurai proudness going on. And you know, that's, that's something, you know, sometimes that companies get stubborn with. And they gotta listen to the consumers, bro, and just like listen to the changing times. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know what? That's a really good point, man. Because I think what me and Orpia were talking about a few days ago was the fact that Nintendo is like that cool uncle who you only like seeing certain holidays. Like he comes to the party, 
and he'll tell you a few jokes, and you're like, oh, this was great seeing you, and then you go back to hanging out with you, with your friends who are younger, and that's the equivalent to me wanting to play a Nintendo game. I only want to play it if it's like convenient for me. Mm-hmm. I'm only gonna want to play, you know, Smash Brothers and the Mario Kart 8 and uh, you know the Mario Galaxy when it's good for me. I'm not really going out actively searching for Nintendo games and Nintendo systems and the Nintendo experience overall because they haven't put themselves in a position where the youth and the people who have grown up can coexist. I mean, I don't mean to bring in like legal issues into this, but Nintendo completely removed a service from, I think it was their handheld, because of some creeps on their Nintendo um, friend code service. Because uh-huh. some because some kid was sending pictures to this to this, uh, to this grown man, some inappropriate pictures, and instead of cracking down on that one person and trying to regulate and trying to make regulations and trying to moderate. trying to reform the moderation, uh-huh. they completely took away everything from the chat service, meaning that all the kids who were using it to send you know just innocent things, innocent pictures, innocent texts. Or not even innocent, just stuff between them that no one else needs to see. They were having a fun time until this one creep messed it up for everybody. However, you wouldn't hear about that happening. Well, I'm not going to say you wouldn't hear about it, but Microsoft or Sony would not have handled that situation like Nintendo did. Nintendo is way too proud, I think, like Sun said. And this E3 conference is going to be huge for them. It's not even a conference, it's a, it's a freaking direct, but you know what I'm saying. Um, when it comes to what they're doing right now, there's nothing on their system, and there's nothing about their system that is so enthralling and so captivating that people are going to want to say, oh my god, I have to go out and buy a Wii U. I'll tell you what they can do, though. <clears throat> this is this is the Tomatron stimulus package for Nintendo. Here's the five things they have to do. The five things that Nintendo has to do. Number one, number one, they have to come out with a better marketing strategy that is geared toward both the youth and the adult. They have to find a way to bring in the family experience along with the adult. They cannot keep catering to these children and expect for everyone and third-party developers to want to jump on board. That's not going to happen. It won't happen. I guarantee you it will not happen. So that's that's number one. They have to come out with a campaign that says, hey, we're still young, but we have adjusted to the adults, the people who want to get the mature games, the people who want to kick back sometimes and just play a bloody shooter. I don't think they'll ever go that far to just release m rated games, uh, you know, exclusively to Nintendo. But I think we can get some T-rated games some heavy, you know, games that people can actually enjoy, like, not so much like a kill zone, but I can see us getting an Uncharted type of game on the Wii U, if they do I say. My second one, they have to come out with new IPs and new characters. They have to do this. They have to. They cannot, they cannot not keep doing this. Nintendo every year, Sony and Microsoft, they come out and they announce at least one new IP every conference. I don't care where it's at. It could be Gamescom, SE, whatever it is. They will come out and they will say, hey, we have a game coming out and this is the name of it. Nintendo, every conference, every direct, every time they're on camera and the world is watching them, they will say the three words that we're tired of hearing. Mario, Pokemon, Wii U Sports. That's it. Those are the three things they only ever announce. Anything that's related to Mario, anything that's related to Pokemon, and anything that's related to the Wii U Sports. That's the only thing they talk about. So the It's just it's so it's so juvenile and it's so plain, it's so predictable. They have to switch it up. Give me a new character, man. Give me a new game. Give me a new IP where I'm like, yo, that actually looks pretty sweet. Like, yo, that actually looks looks pretty dope. If Bayonetta 2 comes out on Wii U, which I think it is still, and it yeah, does it really good. All right, coming out. So they, if it if it does good numbers and it pushes weight on on there, they have to come out with a new IP, and they should already be developing new ones right now because 
Mario was only going to take you so far until we go from hearing, oh, shit, it's Mario, yeah. to, oh, it's Mario, again. The, the only thing Nintendo has going for them is the nostalgia market. And, oh. I mean, because their party is terrible on Nintendo. Like, Nintendo has... N- yeah, that's why, yeah, it's like, that's why their parties, like, they don't gamble releasing any of their games on the Wii U or any Nintendo, I mean, unless it's a handheld, but... Uh, actually, actually, so. actually, you know, you know some, some, some I'm kind of, kind of excited uh, to, to see more of this uh, by uh, Koi Ko- Tecmo that, um, what was it, Legend of Zelda Hyrule Warrior. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge Dan- Dynasty World Warriors fan, so it's like, I'd love to see how that game turns out. Yeah, I mean, they're using, it's a third-party developer, but they're going to be using, like, first-party, like, names. They're gonna, it's going to be a, the Hyrule Universe, which is the uh, Zelda Universe, and, you know, but in Dynasty Warrior format, which is pretty, that's going to be it's an open world. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty sick. I don't know, I think that's pretty awesome. But you're using, you know, you're going to be using the names. Again, it's going to be Zelda game, you know, but it's going to be played differently this time, uh, Dynasty Warrior fashion. Uh, that's great. But, you know, there's some things with Nintendo. Nintendo's one of the oldest games, still right now, today, like, they're still operating, you know, continuing making systems. They're, they're the oldest one right now. And, I mean, they've been out since, I mean, they, they've competed side-by-side side with the Atari. And, you know, seeing them out so long, you know, their, their audience that they had, I mean, they're much older, dude. It's a pretty old audience. And they have a new audience, too. And that's the thing that Nintendo's been happening. They've been having a huge problem, which is this huge identity thing. It's like, all right, do we cater to our old fans that that stuck with us since the old days, or do we cater to the new co- incoming fans? You know, they wanna they wanna still feed the new fans. You know, they wanna create a place for the uh, the newer audience, uh, the younger audience, which is good. I think that's very important. I mean, do when the day I get kids, bro, I'm getting them Nintendo stuff. You know, I mean, I grew up on Nintendo myself. I loved it. I had an amazing childhood because of it. You know, and, you know, keep that formula. But the thing is, for the type of people who want to stay, like, you know, hardcore, like, dude, me, when I get into something, I stay dedicated to it. I commit myself. But the thing is, like, I only go as far as, um, as, I'm, as I'm allowed to until it's like, yeah, like, I, yo, I can't play this anymore. You know, like, dude, I, I am not, this is not keeping me interested. And, like, I got to move on to something else that can actually cater to a lot more, a lot more of my stuff. But, dude, honestly, there is, a Smash Brothers game that I would love to see. You know, they should take pages from other fighters in the past, bro. I don't know if you guys played Darkstalkers, but... Um, love it. Yeah, one of the Darkstalker games actually gives you the options, like, which style of Darkstalkers do you want to play. I part love Part 1, it. Part 2, Part 3, Part 4. And they should do that with Smash Brothers. They should take pages with that. And, like, you know, it's like, yeah, people complain about, like, the whole new Smash Brothers being, you know, too slow, for, you know, catering to the younger audience. Well, they should make an option, just like Darkstalkers did, where you can play as... You know, the configuration out of Smash Brothers Melee. You know, so the people that grew up on that, you know, with that fast-paced, more competitive gameplay, they can go ahead and experience that on the newer game. You know, yeah, you know Smash. Oh. that would be amazing. But, you know, it's like Nintendo's, like, really hard-headed, very stubborn. They're like, no, this is how we should do things. This is how we see it. You know, this is this is how people are going to play our They're game. too old school. I think and that's what I've ever heard that everyone has, man. It's but just like, it, but it, it, contra- it contradicts it, though, because old school gaming was extremely, like, challenging. Dude, go back onto old Nintendo consoles. Dude, they were extremely challenging games. They weren't that really, like, I mean, pick up games, like, really old games, like, and try them out, dude. It's not like today. Like, dude, like, you know, you would try to beat the whole game with just three lives, and you have to beat the whole game with that. Like, nowadays, it's like, Unlimited continues, and all this, it's made so casual that, like, you fall asleep playing it, dude. It doesn't keep you interested. It doesn't keep that awareness. There's no challenge on there. You know, nowadays, like, it's, and this is going, this, this is going to all the, you know, not just Nintendo. This is going to PlayStation. This is going to Xbox. Games are becoming way too, like, casual. And, you know, even when you put on the hardest settings, it's like, dude, this is normal difficulty. It's like... Yeah. But it's I mean, like, when I you pick up though, when, like, you, when you pick up a PS Vita and you pick up a 3DS, it's like a Fisher Price toy. A uh, Tonka toy. To, uh, a Tonka toy compared, compared to yeah. like a freaking a Vulcan Star Trek generator. It's like it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's <laughs> that bad. And th- there's an audience for both of them who 
obviously. But I think the best analogy I can give to Nintendo is Nintendo still doing the robot, and Nintendo and Sony and Microsoft are doing the new game. It's that simple. The robot, yeah, it's classic. It's fun. It may get a party started, and it may be only good in a party setting. But you can't do the robot forever. You have to get new dance moves. You have to move on, and you have to adapt if you want to stay relevant. It's simple as that. Nintendo is going to forever. Nice. Rem- yeah, it's going to forever remain in that. Keep the robot, classic. man. Robots. Part of you, keep it as your mascot, exactly. but no, they'll learn you shit too, bro. They like, yeah, expand your arsenal. Yeah, expand your, uh, your library and stuff. And that's the that's the biggest that's the biggest deal that Nintendo has to come to grips with is just yo, we're old, man, but we can get younger. How is it that I think it's such an oxymoron, it's such irony that one of the companies, the company that caters to the youngest uses the oldest of the methods. Isn't that crazy? Think about that. Nintendo caters to the children, yet they use the method of 50-year-olds and 30-year-old gaming. So it's like, when you look at Sony, they're catering to older gamers, anywhere from 13 and so on. With Nintendo, they're catering from 5 to 15. Like and that's 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 a that's a freaking fact. Anybody who says, "Oh no, there's still games." Yes, there are games that are that are hardcore for the Wii and the Wii U. Yes, there are, but there aren't enough, and the marketing is evident that that's not their goal. They just have games come out. Just because I'm a zebra doesn't mean that when I go in a chicken coop doesn't mean I'm still not a zebra. You are who you still are at heart. So it's like Nintendo has to find their identity. And they have to stick to it. If they want to beat the kid system, be the freaking kid system and go out there and give us some shitload of kid games. If you want to be the in-betweener and you, and you want to be a tweener and be the type of person who can give you the kid games and then give you the hardcores and still sell the same amount and give us what we want on both sides, then give us that. If you want to completely give us a whole new look and become the, a new hardcore system, do that. But the fact of the matter is they have to pick a side and they have to stick to it. We know what Sony's doing. Sony is, they're like, well, I don't know how old, you know, it's going to get rid of up, 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 up to, but it's old. Microsoft, it's anywhere from 5 to 50. Same with, with Sony. And Nintendo just hasn't found their audience yet, and they're searching for one. They're just stuck with the kids right now. And I, I don't think they want to be stuck with just kids. I don't think they want to be the babysitting system. And we talked too, too long about Nintendo anyway. Can we plead or you know, get to what we need to get to? This is presentation. Yeah. All right. Well, before we close out on Nintendo, there is a, a list here I have of some of the games dropping this year or rumored to be dropping this year and early next year. And... If this is true, and I don't expect it all to be, perhaps none of it will be, but um, if this list is accurate, I can see Nintendo winning this year's E3. Okay. Uh, they have a lot of really impressive stuff on this list. Star Fox U is supposed to drop this year. Mm. That would be big. Uh, the, Of course, the Hyrule Warriors, which is the, the hack and slash game that we were talking about, that's supposed to drop this year. That looks like a lot of fun from the footage I've seen. Bayonetta 2 is supposed to drop this year. That's a slightly more mature game than they're used to having. And uh, the first game the first game did okay, but it's nice to see a more mature hack and slash action game like that on their system. There's uh, Yarn Yoshi, which is supposed to be coming out this year. Uh, the um, Kirby... Was it Kirby? I think it was Kirby. Uh, the Kirby Yarn game looked great, and so I expect the Yarn Yoshi game to be the same, if not better. Mario Party U is supposed to drop this year. Mm. Mario Party yeah. is a huge franchise for Nintendo. That is one of the party games for Nintendo systems, and that's supposed to be so. Those are that's games. yeah, that's going to be awesome. Uh, Omega yeah, yeah, Red yeah. and almost done. Omega Red and Alpha Sapphire, two Pokemon games, are supposed to be coming yeah, this really year. Awesome. Yeah, for the for the 3DS. Um, <laughs> we talked about Smash Brothers already. Uh, there's supposed to be a Metroid game 
a new Metroid game coming to the 3DS. Yeah. There's also supposed to be a new Legend of Zelda game coming next year. Uh, they're supposed to be showing that at this E3. Mm. So that's going to be crazy, and I think that's supposed to be for the Wii U. And uh, finally, there's something called Pocket Fighters, which is a Pokemon-exclusive fighting game. Mm. So that's supposed to be dropping next year as well. So Pocket Fighters, wasn't there already a title name Pocket like that Monsters before? No, no, Pocket Monsters was the original name, but okay. Pocket Fighters, I was like on the uh, Neo Geo Pocket. <laughs> it's like Street Fighter characters. I don't know if you guys remember that Pocket Fighter. I oh, right. But that could I just like the name. Yeah. That could just be like a temporary title until they think of something else. Probably. I'm, I'm thinking also, of probably. Uh, I think you left out Xenoblade. Yes, and Xenoblade as well. Thank you. Yeah, so if even half that list is accurate, dang, like what exclusives are Microsoft Nintendo, and Sony going to bring? Yeah, Nintendo. I'm just, where you're coming from and Nintendo also does need a, a larger stable of more mature titles for the older gamers uh, I think they should continue on with their their child friendly path and they definitely need some new IPs uh, I can't think of the last time they had a new IP that really blew it big other than Pokemon or since Pokemon <laughs> so yeah, but who knows what they're working on hopefully Nintendo will shock us all hopefully so moving on to the final of the big three, PlayStation. Stack Sony. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, let me see. Take it away. Right, let me get into this. Let me dig into this nice steak of, of a topic. Um, Sony. Sony, Sony, Sony. I'm in a predicament with you, Sony. I don't know what to think about you right now. I love you. I play PS4 every day. I play my PS3 every day, and this is coming from a hardcore fan. I want Sony to come out and destroy it. I have y'all know I want every company to come out and kill it, but the world isn't fair, and, and not everything is green on the other side. So what I expect from Sony, I expect a relatively safe conference. I expect a conference that doesn't have that many surprises, but I do expect their presentation skills to get back up there with Microsoft. But Microsoft has the best presentation skills. They can make shit seem like gold. They will come out and tell you that, hey, we just robbed your mama and your whole house and there's nothing left in your, in your bank account. And they'll make it seem like you just won the lottery. They're amazing. Sony, I think they're going to follow that tactic and they're going to hype up things that what we really have to see for ourselves, and we're going to be excited about it. I think that Sony's going to announce uh, Uncharted 4, officially the name. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we'll see a teaser trailer for that, and I think we'll see a, a year. I think we'll see 2015, late 20, fall 2015, early 2015. I hope it's fall, because I want Uncharted to get that game of the year and all. Uh, I think we'll see Gorilla's new IP. Which, no, actually, actually, they confirmed that they're not, they're not oh, going to talk about. Oh, yeah. They're not doing that. Nope. Yeah. 
the the thing oh. is they're they're still working on it, but Gorilla will be there, but for a kill zone uh, well, intercept. They're gonna I be on the think, floor. I don't think Maybe it might be a surprise, dude. I don't know. Like yeah. a lot of developers say that we're not gonna be in this game, we're not gonna be there, and bam, it's one of those surprises. So, I think we'll see that either yeah. at, at the most I think we'll see uh I think we'll see a logo, if, if anything. It's either, yeah, one of the final games is going to be a surprise at the very ending. The developer is going to just, like, surprise everyone. Bam, we're here, and it's like, no, 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 whoa. No, no, no. Yeah, so it's either going to be naughty. It's going to be at the very ending of E3. They're going to be like, oh, guess what? This is what we've been waiting for. They're gonna, I don't know, man. I, I think it's going to be big. Sony's going all out this year with E3. I mean, to the point that you're even seeing what they're doing. They're inviting. They got 40 theaters around the, around the, around the states. I mean... And, dude, they're inviting everybody, like, to, for free to go ahead and first come, first serve. And, dude, they want people to see, like, what's going down this E3. Like, I don't know, man. Like, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, uh, like, a lot of, uh, they're pushing, they're pushing E3 to 2014 this year. I think they want to, they're going to be releasing something that people want to see. Um, I'm not, you know, this, to me, it's, it's really, uh, like, I'm going. I'm, I'm actually this, on the 9th, I'm going to be going to, the theater close by me. Um, I might have to like wait there all day and stuff. So you think so. going to just slam dunk? The I don't know, dude. They they're going all out. They're inviting people. They actually paid okay. for theaters to be okay. viewing. I, I don't know what they're. Yeah, they're doing some crazy stuff like that. They're going to live stream E3 with a lot of like exclusive developer uh, developer video uh, content. Um, yeah, so it's, they're going to have like all this stuff over there. They're going to be giving away like free stuff. I think I, I'm thinking it's going to be like uh, codes, probably digital codes to the audience, uh, maybe a, a free year plus or something, I don't know, but they said you're going to be getting some, uh, something, I don't know what it is, well, I have no idea. From what we saw but, from, in their statement, they said that this is going to be our biggest E3 yet, and this is going to be our most exciting E3 we've had in a long time. Now, yeah. one yeah. thing I always take into consideration is you can only take about 50% of what these companies say for real, yeah. because... Microsoft said the exact same thing last year. That's oh, we're gonna come out and we're gonna destroy. You know, we got the freaking DRM. Well, so, they did. They destroyed themselves. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, they, they destroyed were, themselves. Were so, right? yeah. yeah, I mean, they freaking destroyed themselves. Yeah. So I can only take fifty percent of what they said seriously. Here's what I think we'll see. I said the Uncharted. I already said the new IP from Gorilla. I think we'll see a logo. I think we'll see a teaser from that. I think we'll see the intercept. Um. And there's something to be there on the floor. Yeah. I think the one thing I'm worried about, this is what I'm really wor worried about right now. The one thing I'm jury of right now is if Sony comes out and they just BS it with a bunch of remasters, I swear to you I will cut their conference off if they do 30 minutes or more on a remaster of a game. I promise well, you. I'm not, the not Last of Us is getting a remaster for the PS4. I am so glad it is. I, I love The Last of Us. I'm going to buy that day one. But if they spend more than 30 minutes talking about it, the remaster, there's no point to that. Yeah, with that re remasters, you know, I'm really annoyed well, with, well, 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 with like all the games that, that that are on like you know both current gen and that last gen. So I was like, I want games that are for the PS4 and like for the Vita, not 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 games that that are like for both. Because then then, then you gotta cut back, yeah, you know some some of the quality that could have been you know amazing on you know one console. Well, I mean, I think I think hold on, um, actually to that statement. I think it's good that they're doing that because understand that a lot of the new PlayStation Watch stars could have been yeah, better. Yeah, no, no, check this out, check this out. I think that it's good that they're doing that. Um, yes, if you look at it from our point of view, it's annoying because we're seeing the same thing. But understand that, like, we have, I mean, PlayStation has the mass, like, it already has the most uh, audience on, on PlayStation. They, they took it. They, they won that. So that means a lot of new, there's a lot of new audiences on PlayStation never owned the PS3, they never experienced, they never had a chance to play those games, because they're exclusive to the PS3, I and mean, obviously PS3 doesn't play back any of those games, but um, this is a great opportunity for these, you know, new incoming gamers, you know, a lot of them are former Xbox gamers, a lot of them are former Nintendo gamers, uh, you know, now they're on the PS4, they invested in that, they're like, hey, you know, I think I wasn't able to play these games before, there's an HD uh, remastered version of it, you know, HD whatever, uh, yeah, here's my chance. You know, I think they're doing that because they're, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a great, I mean, these are amazing games. 
No, I'm glad they're doing it. I just don't want them to do more minutes at their conference. Yeah. I, don't think, I don't think we need an hour dedicated to Killing Green being remastered and Last of Us being I don't need that. Just give us the five minute, you know, montage that they that they that they'll have probably oh, so they'll have that montage and, and they'll show us that, oh, we're remastering this and this will be out this year. And then when Naughty Dog comes on the stage nice. Yeah, just give us what we want. The Sony gamer wants new games. We want them now and we need them. We yeah. need new IPs. And I yeah, think Sony's you. gonna have a good conference. I just think they're gonna play it safe because from what we started out with a, a month ago, son, and a gamer in Orfield, and Jen, um, you remember how they were talking about, hey, uh, we're gonna have God of War four, we're gonna have Last of Us two, uh, we're gonna have Uncharted four, all these games that had everyone going crazy. But then we started to actually like think for a second and was like, you know, Sony wouldn't announce all these games pre E three. They would only announce the, the developers. So obviously a lot of this is BS. So, what I think we're going to see, I already said the Uncharted, I already said the new IP, I already said the uh, remasters, I think we're going to see that. But I also think the one thing that you are, or might be interested in, especially you, son, is the uh, PS Vita and PS4 bundle. Yes. And I'm, I'm interested in that price tag. That price tag got to be right, because I think if it's anywhere near 600 it's not going to do shit. But I think Agreed. if it's, I, think I said it, I, I said it, if it's 490, 499, 500, well, well, I think it'll that, be good. Well, wasn't that there a uh, Best Buy ad, ad saying, saying that they had that, that uh, listed and it was like, I think $560? Correct. It was, it, it was like only saving $40, but that, that's still like something. It is still something, it is, but I think that if somebody wants to make it... Yeah. Sony wants to make that splash with the Vita, and I think this is where the topic is going to start to shift. It. We've already seen what, what they're going to do. I think we're, think we're going to get the bundle. They really, we're, we're not going to get King, Kingdom Hearts 3. I think that the, that they'll announce The Last Guardian being canceled post E3. Actually, but I think Square, Square Enix did not announce that, that uh, Kingdom Hearts, or no. Yeah, yeah, King, Kingdom Hearts 3 and Final Fantasy 15 won't be at E3 this year. So that sucks. Oh, um, I, think yeah. we'll see, I think also we'll see the order and the division, and hopefully we see H Tower. I don't know if y'all remember that H Tower was made by the original creators of SOCOM before Zipper took over. Well, and I, mean, uh, I hope we see that game because that's supposed to be the rebirth. Of I'm SOCOM. looking at uh, uh, pretty much this is Sony co- uh, confirms E3 2014 booth lineup. Okay. Um, I mean, there's a lot of games on here. Most of the games you said, I don't... It, I mean, again, these are games that are on the floor. Yeah. So, they yeah, they're confirmed games, uh, booths are going to be on the floor, but, again, there could be a lot of stuff out there announced on the big screen during the conference, which probably will not be at the floor yet. So, like, you know, maybe they'll bring something up on the, on the Uncharted title or, uh, again, some of the Curly yeah. Sky or something. But, uh... As for the other stuff, as H hour, I don't mean I don't see it on here. I, I mean I hope I hope yeah. you see at least at least in the montage because Spy Cooper Four didn't get a four. Well, I understand that H hour is one of those games that are being developed. Uh, like it's not it's not within Sony anymore. I understand like the developers are yeah, yeah, yeah. raising money. Uh, the same you know the same same they're going the same route as uh Mighty Number no. Nine. Yeah, I, mean, if you guys I hope they reach their goal. Yeah, Mighty Number no. Nine is looking pretty dope, man. It's coming out on. It's gonna come out on every single platform. But um, yeah, it was catered to those that been wanting a Mega Man game, but Capcom hasn't been dishing out anything because I don't know what the you know what's wrong with them. I don't know. Uh, Capcom. I don't know. Um, uh, Crapcom. Crapcom. Whatever you. I don't know. Capcom. But uh, uh, I don't know, man. They, you know, maybe the struggles. Maybe it the could be that. Is so real. The near struggle bankrupt. is real, dude. We're seeing it they're in developers, near, man. They're near bankrupt, man. It's like, they got it. They got to start listening to the fans so they can start making that money, bro. And I that's mean, the thing, like. <laughs> but they gotta be. They gotta be smart, man. Because a lot of companies do listen to fans, but the thing so, is, a lot of fans. And this, this is what I think. A lot of, a lot of gaming fans. There's a lot, and this is what's really like upsetting me. Um, sometimes fans are asking for stuff they're not gonna get. There, sometimes fans are going to be asked, you're going to be like pushing on things that's like, you know, hey, we sh-, you know, it's like they don't know what they want. And it's scary. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that. I see that. I mean, I see that around me. But 
I think I think that it's I don't know, man. It, it, it has it, this is like it's a crucial <laughs> moment. It's a crucial moment of struggle right now, dude, in the gaming industry. And you know, I think that they're gonna have to like really get some good like analyzers out there. Like, know, like, which is valid source, which is a good stuff. Pay attention to the people who actually do play the games, you know. I mean, because those, you know, those are the ones that are going to be like, yeah, they, those are the ones that know about the game, you know. They know what's going to be good. And that, and that's that's one thing I'm seeing, like, you know, developers, it's cool that they're trying to, like, always um, introduce new stuff. And that's awesome, because if it's fun, why not? Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, it's good to be introduced to new stuff. This is how we get the times going. But, um, you know, there are some things that are good that are not broken, yet they change. They take out the stuff that's not broken. They change the stuff that doesn't need fixing, you know, and they completely ignore the stuff that do need fixing. And it's like, I don't know, I think that they need to listen, listen more. And, I mean, they're going to have to expand on that, dude. Um... You know, again, like I was saying, like, in the situation of releasing a fighting game where, you know, you have a certain play style and then you release this other fighting game, it plays completely different, like, a lot more slower, it's less, you know, mm-hmm. you got to go on the roots of, like, just like uh, Darkstalkers, man. And, your audience first. Yeah, yeah, and, and create something, you know, maintain that audience. At the same time, you want to try something new, like, all right, well, here's a different alternate, you know, settings where you can play your game, you know, with this type of settings, or if you know, you're a fan of this type of game, you know, you can play on this settings, you know, with that configuration, you know, so, like, it would be dope if, you know, they can kind of do something like that, but, again, I don't know, um, I just time, think that, I yeah. think that, man, it's, we're in a, we're in a transition period for each company, Nintendo is facing a huge depression right now, um, and they can get back in if they just get some games, Sony is for the first time since PS2 has been on top, and I want to see how they react to being the number one guy, being king of the hill. Hopefully, they don't give it away like Microsoft did at, at, at the end or during the middle of their life cycle. And I want to see how Microsoft deals with playing from behind because we saw what Microsoft did when PS2 was out. It was like the Xbox was didn't even exist for a lot of people. The only thing that made the Xbox relevant was when one game came out. And that one game is Halo. And with Sony, man, I want to kind of shift the conversation back to them because we kind of got away from them. But I see what Sony was saying. That's a great point. Um, I, I, I want to talk about something that I think Sony has to talk about this year. And they need to revitalize it. And that's the PS Vita. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, dude, yes. They I, there, are, there's some stuff that scared me, man. Some stuff that scared me with the Vita. Uh, and I mean, I remember one guy asked, "Is like, yo, uh, you know, are we expecting any more AAA games on the Vita? Like, such as like, you know, Uncharted, uh, Golden Abyss, Killzone, Mercenary. You know, I mean, those type of like really like power hitters. You know, Gravity Rush and stuff like that. And you know, they're saying that, you know, I noticed they've been focusing more on indie devs for the Vita. I was like, you know, all right, cool, you're giving indie devs a chance, but, you know, I mean, you know, I'm I'm seriously thinking that." PlayStation has some big plans for the Vita, and this is what I'm thinking. PlayStation Now. PlayStation Now is going to be a service that is going to be covering all Sony products. I'm hoping. I mean, if it does, if it lands on, I mean, on every single product, I it mean, be huge for the yeah, I mean, this is a streaming service like Netflix, right, but with games. Yeah, all right, and, I mean, yeah, I mean, well, with well, well, with the re- re- remote play on the uh, P- PS4, like I, I've tried to play, what was it? I tried playing NBA 2 2 K14, and it's trash. I really do not like it. Um, I, 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 I tried to set this career Creed 4 and sounds like that. That's playable. It's in, it's enjoyable. Blah blah blah. But like my, my main my main issue with it is that there's a lot of uh, fun input lag. That's the main issue I have with it. Yeah, I mean that's what you're gonna get when it comes to streaming, and you know that's that's kind of like I don't know maybe again this is test phase. I mean, um, well they, they uh, PlayStation Now has been in beta since like I believe December of last year. No, it's, I don't know. It's been in beta for a while though. Are, are we are, are we able to talk about this then? Oh, oh no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're, 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 uh, a lot of people are getting, are getting invites to, uh, to answer the beta. It's not open beta yet. Not, not open beta, but, but like, I believe, believe a whole bunch of more people are going to be invited during E3. Uh, okay, so hopefully, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, hopefully we don't, we're not saying I anything think, that's... I think PS Now, no. if y'all are okay. to talk about it, I think PS Now is going to be huge for the Vita, if it is done correctly. But the price tag, yeah, no, again, I... that price has to be right, man. I, if it, if it's an extension of PS Plus and it matches the price, I don't see it doing shit. If, here's what my price for PS Now would be. Um, for an entire year... Thirty dollars. I think I think thirty dollars per year. That was steal. I think that's yeah, a steal. I, I don't know, I man. <laughs> good, so, no, I know what I'm saying, but this is my ideal price. Yeah. Here's, here's what I'm saying. Yes. Hear me out. Twelve months, thirty dollars per year. Did you get a certain amount of games for it? They're not I, gonna give you every title available because no, you know, Rockstar is not gonna sign off on them giving you uh, GTA 5. Uh, I don't think Gorilla's going to sign off on giving them Mercenaries 2, 3, 1. I don't think they're going to give you all that. I think they're going to give you just like PS Plus, but in a grander scale, where it's picked from the library of games that are available, rather than each month you only get one. I think we'll see Uncharted 3, since that's given out free. I think we'll see Bioshock Infinite, all the games that have come out for PS Plus on every one of them. I think we'll see those. And on top of that, I think we'll get a few new games. Like, you know, I think we'll get a Watch Dogs trial or something, maybe. But the biggest thing I want to talk about, really, is for those of you who have Vita and for the people who don't, what do you all feel has to be done for the Vita to make it prominent enough to not be laughed at when you say in the same sentence as the 3DS? Because right now, when you say... Oh, I love my Vita. People will be like, oh, that's, that's, that's cool, bro. But if you say, oh, I love my Pokemon or my 3DS, people will be like, yeah, man. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool, cool game. It's not even a matter of, oh, man, you, you do race that Vita? It's like, oh, you have a Vita? <clears throat> cool. But for some reason, 3DS, when you say, oh, I have a 3DS, man, I love my games, well, I'm like, yeah, man, it's good system. I like it. Rather than, it should be the other way around if we're thinking about technology. But, like I said before, Nintendo's put themselves in a position. Now, it isn't exactly fair because Nintendo's been in the handheld game way before Sony. But if Sony can capture a third of the success of the 3DS, or at least the Nintendo DS, which is, I think is the best-selling handheld of all time, if they can get a third of that, I think they're good. They don't have to match Nintendo bar for bar. They, they can't. It's impossible. They will not. There are too many people who love Pokemon. Sony does not have a title that is universally loved and recognized as Pokemon. They just don't. They're working but on it. I they're think, trying to get it. Yeah. yeah, and I think they're going to get... <laughs> I think that what they have to do with this... Coming out with the new Invisibles for... Uh, yeah. yeah. That's going to be on the show for E3 this year. Uh, Invisibles... What's it called? Uh, Alliance? Oh, just Invisibles 2. Invisibles... Uh, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's kind of like a... It's kind of like a type of, I guess you would say, Pokemon-ish. I don't think it's going to be a... I have no idea, man. I've, I've yet to play it. I mean, the characters are kind of neat. Invisibles is more but, of a, like, you scan yeah. these little things into the game. And you battle them. They have you know, monsters I mean, with cool. AR, AR technology. And stuff, that's, but, like, to me, that's, that's, that's yeah. really cool. That's some really cool it's stuff. It's going to be E3 this year, a new one. That's, the, that's, that's actually really good technology. I'm looking at it. I've seen, seen this for a long PlayStation's time. PlayStation's doing their part, you know. Yeah. Um... They've been doing the part. They're releasing these games. They got these, you know, they got these games that would, you know, fall under that type of genre, which is, you know, I guess the type of, like, monster type of collecting game. Uh, you know, RPG style. But, um, you know, they do release the games. Uh, some things, though, like, I feel that, you know, the Vita is not really a, a kid's market device. Because, like you said earlier... You know, the the 3DS is like a Tonka toy or, or like a, a Play School Fisher toy. Price. Fisher Price, yeah. And then you got the Vita, which is like this type of like, you know, an expensive, or really a very expensive like type of like, you know, uh, cell phone, I guess, or whatever. You know, but I mean, it's, it's like a smartphone. Yeah, but it's like a design for gaming. Like, 
specializing in gaming. You know, so like, you know, you got which one are you gonna give to a kid? You know, like, so why even bother? I mean, to me, I see like, yeah, this is a really like sophisticated piece of technology. You know, and you're gonna like, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of delicate. You don't want to drop it either. You know, you get that crack in that screen, all that stuff. I'm pretty sure you can throw the 3DS around, and that thing's pretty durable. Um, but uh, yeah, like, you know. This type of stuff parents don't buy for the kids, you know. Like this is yeah. more, this is more of a, a, a device that is an adult will buy. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, the stuff that the Vita does, it's more appealing to an adult. I mean, you have a lot of, you have a lot of internet, like, uh, uh, like apps you can put on it. Yeah. Really and I mean, it's 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 solely designed on gaming. You know, this thing and and social media itself. It is a portable PlayStation network. Which is one of the greatest gaming networks right now, you know. And you know, on a handheld device, which is pretty, like, that's pretty amazing. I can go on there, instant message people. I can go ahead and you know do cross game chat. I can do things I can't do on the PS3, on the Vita, which is extremely impressive. And you know, while gaming, you know, while I'm gaming, I get little pop ups. You know, oh, you know, so and so users online. Oh, you got invited to a party chat. You know, stuff like that, which I only would experience on a on a console. I can experience it on a handheld, and I think that's great. You know, uh, uh, the network alone is to me one of the strongest selling points for a Vita. You know, a lot of people don't even buy, have games on the Vita; they buy it just to keep in contact with people on the network. You know, and you know, for me, it's um, I don't know, dude. It's been something uh, a seriously handy device to take with me everywhere I go. Uh, my my top favorite game on there is uh, Killzone Mercenary, uh, as well as you know, I love Gravity Rush. I'm looking forward to part two and. Uh, you know, Project Diva is always an awesome game. So you like your Vita? I, I seriously do. I enjoy. I get a lot of hours. Okay. Yeah, I get a lot of hours on my Vita. And so you're 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 in the minority of the people who see the need for the Vita. You're you're in the minority, but it's okay because you like. It. I'm not discrediting if you like it. Um, I mean, it fits. Well, it fits. It fits what it fits, fits what it fits I'm what asked. Do. Yeah, it fits what I want to do because, like, I mean. I own, you know, I own, I own the Nintendo handheld before, and it's like, yeah, you know, it's, these, these are all right, but then it limits you, and it's like, okay, you're capped over here with the, you know, with the Vita, I feel I have more, I have a bit more freedom. Uh, you know, I'm able to do things that I'm not able to do on a Nintendo handheld. I mean, again, to me, like, I'm all about social. Like, so, social network to me is really important. Uh, I love communication. Uh, I love hanging out with friends. To me, the joy of gaming with friends is more valuable than just, you know, I mean, but that's just the type of gamer that I am. I'm a social gamer, you know. Uh, there's a lot of other gamers out there who, I mean, they're like hermit crabs, man. They just play them RPGs, like, to themselves. They don't want nobody bothering them. You got the other gamers that, you know, just uh, want to play for fun. You know, for me, I love competitive. I love playing as a team. I love working as a team. Uh, you know, to me, that's, yeah, dude, I'm a social, I mean, yeah, like, I'm a pack runner. I think, I think the perfect analogy for most gamers when it comes to a PS Vita versus a 3DS. A 3DS is a simple car, but you have a lot of places to go to reliable. In, in, in that car. It's over reliable, but you have a lot of places to go to where you can go in that car. You're a person with a lot of places to go. With the Vita, in terms of gaming library, it's a high-tech car, has all this shit on it that everyone would want. The GPS has everything. But you really don't have that many places to go. So why are you driving this huge car? That's exactly. what people, I think, are using the analogy for. It. It's more of a, it's like a really nice car, but you don't have anywhere to go. Really. You only have to go to home, school, and your job. That's it. On the 3DS, you can go on field trips. You can go on road trips. You can go to parties, all these different places. Because the game library is much wider. Whether you like the game is a pretty different story. Well, I, 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 I would say I would say the locations of the areas that you go to on the on say on the simple car are probably like so like Burger King and probably like you know McDonald's playpins and stuff. You know like because <laughs> well, you know, I can I can actually drive to like you know like you know mature rated movies. I can go to you know you a thousand playpins. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I don't know. I'm able to go places where I'm not able to with the Nintendo. So it's like, 
Well, let me speak on that. Yeah. Like a thousand places versus like five mature movies that are really good. That's what I think. So you go, you know, you go to either go to the movies or you go to like you know Mcmurray Burger King and shit. You know, so but like, I think some I people think, like that though. Yeah, but I think yeah. what people are forgetting is, and let me, let me get this point out. I'll let what 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 they'll go. I think what people are trying to say is that with the Vita, no one is doubting the technology and no one is getting down on what it can do. The necessity of having it and the appeal of having a Vita isn't there for most gamers. It's a niche within a niche. And I completely love the technology. I'm not, I've never once said that the Vita has inferior technology. I've never once said that it doesn't have potential because it does. What it does not have right now is the commitment from the company known as Sony. And it does not have the games to back up a price tag from the launch that big. It didn't have it. It had, yeah. it had a mediocre call. There's but, one thing I agree with you on that, dude. Um, Sony needs to focus. And really, like, like I love Killzone Mercenary because it pushes what the Vita does. It pushes the capability. I mean, uh, Gorilla Cambridge, shout out to you guys. Absolutely love you as developers. You guys, I mean, you transferred, you brought a console experience to a handheld, right? And I want to see more of that. Like, I feel that I only saw that with that just one game. I mean, this is a Ferrari. This thing is built to drive fast. And I'm not driving fast. I'm, I'm, I'm driving on, like, a freaking 15-mile lane school zone. And it's like, you know, this car can go really fast, but, like, it's, there's not, they're not building stuff, or they're not making the roads, so I can, you know, they're not making them straightaways, so I can actually, yeah. you know, get, get use out of my system how, I, how, how I wanted to, and you know, right now I'm gonna be on Kills of Mercenary for some time, you know, to me I think it's one of the greatest, actually one of the top greatest games, you know, on the beat of, you know, like so far that I've seen, and I, I seriously don't want Sony to give up on that. Um, yeah, that's me personally speaking as a gamer. You know, I don't want them, you know, trying to, like, get away from that. Because if people bought a Vita, they bought it because of the power, all right? And people want to see more, like, AAA power type games. Atari Golden Abyss, you know, that was a brilliant game. You know, keep it up. You know, if we can get a part two or something. I don't know. But, you know, these games, done. they did well. They did really well. I mean... From a like, critical standpoint or from a sales standpoint? Uh, both. I mean, the game played amazing. The game played amazing. The game. I think. I know, think. Uh, I think. Selective for Persona Four, it had amazing critical response. Um, Persona for, Four was outstanding. For Kills on Mercenary, critical, and I think it had some pretty good sales. Where it didn't do amazing, but it did moderately good enough to get a sequel done. It sold enough the quota. Um, freaking Uncharted okay. Gold in the Abyss. Well, also for Mercenary. Right. Uh, old Mercenary Gold in the I know, I'm saying, I think, it, I think it did good enough to get a sequel. Oh, and hopefully it should they, get a sequel. Yeah, it should get a sequel. Yeah. Um, Golden Abyss, I think that did pretty good critically. I don't, I don't think it sold that much from a, from a sales standpoint, but it still got, you know, nines and eights and all the good stuff that it needs. And another one, Gravity Rush. I think that got pretty good sales. You know, it didn't do that much, but you're not going to get that much on a Sony handheld. It's more about the, the critical response over anything. If you sell okay and you get 10 to 9, you're going to get a sequel most likely on handhelds. But that's usually what Nintendo does. Um, but my gripe with the Vita comes down to Sony. It really does come down to Sony because there's no excuse. I can't blame an inanimate object for not doing good. I, I just can't. What I can blame is the lack of enthusiasm in their campaigns and their marketing for the Vita. Sony has shown time and time again that if they get bad press and they get bad PR from a peripheral, from a game, from a series, whatever it may be, whatever adventure they go on, they will not do anything else for it if the people don't like it immediately. And that's not good. Nintendo, on the other hand, they do it too much. They will continue to pound your head in even if it doesn't work. But sometimes that tactic does work because it, it just needs another year. We were, if we were, if we were around the clock back, I believe three or two years from now, we will be having the same conversation about 
Yo, the 3DS is failing, bro. Do y'all remember that? How the 3DS was absolute shit. It was wasn't doing anything. The people were so good. People were so angry with Nintendo. They were like, yo, this system is nothing. It's too expensive. It has no games. Where's our, where's our Pokemon? Uh-huh. And then Nintendo was like, all right, give us a year and we'll make your investment worth it. They yeah. came out with, with four Pokemon games within two years. They came out with, I believe, a Metroid game. They came out with the Star Fox, I believe. And they came out with, like, some hella load of games. Yeah, he, just, he just got about, like, 20, 20 confirmed, like, more than 20 confirmed games on the floor for mm-hmm. E3, for Vita. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's, I mean, that's a lot of Vita games coming out. Yeah. We'll that's see if we'll see if so can do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, um, you know, to me, I'm I'm hoping they don't, you know, give up on the, uh, I really don't want to see them to. give up on, on the Vita market. I, I, I seriously don't think because the Vita, all right, the Vita is going to be, a, 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 is doing something different that the PSP didn't. And the Vita is a complete, a complete, like, it's it's not even not, not even a sidearm, but it, it accompanies the PS4, and it it, it complements the PS4 so well that I mean technically both can be like the same device. And what I mean by this is that the fact that you can every single every single title on the PS4 will be able to be uh, streamed with remote play on the Vita, and it accompanies it. So kind of like the Wii U tablet is with the Wii U, you know. It's like that with PlayStation. So you have the Vita. It's actually now a piece of the PS4 for the new generation, this new 8th uh, generation we're starting in. Uh, the Vita's going to get a lot more attention, and I think that's what's going to really separate it. Because I know that Remote Play was available on the original PSP, but like a handful of games were able to you know, actually properly like play it. And this is something, the Vita is something that the PSP always wanted to be but couldn't be. And it's what the Vita, you know, it's what the PSP, it's a, it's a PSP done right. That's the way I see the Vita, because it not only does it have a social network, it does all the stuff that the original uh, PSP wanted to do, and, and you know, and then some. So this, I think, we're we're gonna see a lot more attention. I hope we're gonna see more. You know, I, I would I would hope we're gonna get more attention on the Vita. Uh, we continue to get the attention. Um, I do not want to see, and I feel that you know, and like they, I mean, they already talked about it. And they said it, and I I don't want them to go this direction. I seriously don't. I, I, I really hope they're going to listen to us. You know, they listen to, you know, the consumers and stuff like that. Pay attention to the gamers. You know, this is for the gamers, right? I hope so. I, w- I would hope so. You know, um, I want to see a continuation of these type of games. I mean, we have Gorilla Cambridge. You know, it's, 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 Gorilla Cambridge is uh, a part of the developer under Gorilla Games. You know, Gorilla Games is focusing on the console stuff. I'm imagining Gorilla Cambridge is going to do be doing handheld. The past game they've done before was Little Big Planet for the, uh, you know, for PSP, and then you know now they worked on Mercenary, and that PSP game for LBP was, eh, it wasn't my favorite PSP <laughs> game. That game was, eh, whatever. But they, I was surprised what they did with uh, Mercenary, and you know I was so skeptical about the game when I heard it's, that they were working on it. Game. But they, dude, they blew my mind, dude. They blew my mind. It's an amazing game. Yeah, yeah it is. One of my top favorite handheld games ever. It's, 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 I would say comfortably. Comfortably. It's the best handheld shooter, period. I don't care what anyone says. You cannot get any better. And, I mean, big shout-out to the camera, dude. They managed to freaking drag, uh, you know, and, and bring over uh, an, a, a PS3 engine, a shooter engine, put it on a handheld. You know, yeah, they you know they made some tweaks so they can get to get it work. But, dude, the game plays smooth. It plays it's extremely enjoyable. I love it. I mean... I want to see more stuff like that. It's possible. It's possible to do this. Gorilla Cambridge proved it. Dude, don't do. I mean, don't ignore that. When you succeeded in something, keep going for it. Stop trying. Yeah. You know, don't try to reinvent stuff. Oh, we're gonna go with this direction. Stop trying to experiment. You did something good. Continue it. Stay on this track. Don't. You know. And this is what's really like bugging me. All right, you have this company. You know, and it's like, all right, you create this awesome game. All right, an amazing game. It's like, dude, keep going. It's like, no, we're gonna experiment other stuff. No, let's let's experiment PS Plus, dude. Now you're all that stuff. You're gambling on something that we don't even know if it's gonna work in the future. Hopefully, I mean, I hope it works, but don't like, don't just stop production on your stuff that's succeeding, just to focus on something that might work. You know, I mean, continue just in case, man. Because I mean, I, I know like there's gonna be a lot of people out there that are not gonna be able to pay. 
monthly subscriptions, you know. Yeah. So, you know, I think that it would be great, all right? I think it would be great if they focus, continue focusing on these AAA games, like these AAA light type games, man, for the Vita, and keep it up, man. I, I don't want them to abandon that. I want to see more games like that, dude. I want to see... We need a balanced offering. That's all we need yeah. is to see them balance out what they're doing. And I think what, what you're getting here, son, is we need to see the Vita stay true to what it's it's good at. We need to see Sony stay aggressive with the new IPs and announce that Uncharted 4 and the show us some order. And we need to see the features of what PS Plus is. Because I'm, I'm going to keep this very brief. There's really not much separating... The Xbox One and the PS4 at this very moment. There's not that much other than the amount of sales. The games are not as good as they're going to be right now, obviously. The features aren't that different, and the networks are not that different. They do the same amount of things, basically. While they're, all that's different is the fact that Sony has, what, like 4 million up on the Xbox One? And that's, that, that, that is a big reason. But we need to see Sony stay aggressive. I want to see a God of War game. If it's only if the plot is done right, I need to see Uncharted. I need to see The Order. I hope Drive Club comes out with some innovative gameplay. I need new games that are going to be innovative. That's the number one thing in 2014 in Infinity that I need to see from games nowadays. I don't see enough innovation. I see the same story rehashed on every first-person shooter. The squad of people left behind, they have to dog it out one-on-one with all these different people. It's so unbelievable. I'm tired of the same fighting game with the same, you know, finishing moves. Oh, you ripped, you ripped some guy's head off. Oh, so freaking original. I'm tired of the same races doing the same thing. Turbo, that's great. Can you give me something new? Give me a slow-mo mode. Give me some new angles. Give me some new graphics. I need innovation, and I need it now because I am about to just throw a fit if I see one FPS game do the same amount of story that the, every other FPS has done. I'm getting tired of them. I need new games. And Sony has continued to give me innovation. Naughty Dog, you're the best studio right now. I'm looking forward to seeing you. And I think Orfeo wants to pose a question to us from what I'm saying. Orfeo, you want to tell us something? That I do. Well, I could go on into the Vita and the 3DS, but I feel like you two have already said uh, a good amount. On, <laughs> yeah, a good amount on that topic. Yeah, I still got more to say. <laughs> I have no doubt. Keep no going. doubt. Turn that topic for another day. Yeah. But uh, and when that happens, it will happen. I'll speak on it. But getting back to the press conferences, <clears throat> like out of the three, and I'll get to the question very shortly. I'll I'll keep this brief. When it comes to the big three, I worry about Sony's conference the most out of all the out of the, out of the three console manufacturers, um, and that is because Microsoft has announced they're going to announce a lot of exclusives. I think they said they're going to announce 15 exclusives during the show, whether that's all timed, whether it's all true exclusives, who knows? Whether it might also be on PC, no one knows. But they're going to bring the games, and that is going to be impressive. As well. With Nintendo, they may be with Nintendo. Yeah. Their rumored list is hella impressive. We don't know if it's, again, completely accurate. It's probably not. But if even half the list is accurate, amazing show. They may very well win E3, despite them not having an actual conference. With Sony, I don't know. Last year, arguably, they won, not necessarily based upon what they showed, but because of how horrible Microsoft did. Because the majority of their applause came from, hey, we're going to not do what Microsoft is doing. We're not going to screw you over. And that's what gave them all a huge applause along with the price, which, yes, it was a good price, but it was especially good because it undercut the competition, their biggest competition, by 100 bucks. So this E3, Microsoft isn't going to drop that ball again. So Sony's going to have to rely on what they have. And from what I hear, a lot of their stuff is getting pushed back, uh, which is similar to Microsoft. A lot of their announcements are going to be mostly for next year. Some of, some of it's going to be this year. Uh, some of their stuff has already been leaked, like Project Beast, that looks like maybe a Demon Souls 2 coming. We've, um, that's good, but it's a niche title. Uh, I really, I don't know, I feel like I don't know enough, or enough hasn't been leaked from Sony to really 
feel like, you know, I think they got a good conference coming up. I'm eager to see it. I'm eager to see Microsoft. I'm eager to see Nintendo's. And I can't wait for Monday and also Tuesday since that's when Nintendo's going to show their thing. I can't wait for those days to roll around. Uh, so who do you think is going to win this E3? Who do you think is going to come out and either dominate or at least eke out a victory over the other two? That, that is a tough question, bro. That's, that's a hard question. Because um, the thing, it's like, yeah, you, you got it. <laughs> uh, Charles, you go first, bro. You go. Um, oh, all right. Um, no, I, can, I, can, I kind of think that that's a tough question for us all, but mostly because we're play PlayStation fans and, like, ha, ha, uh, as how well, Orpheus spoke, spoke of it, it sounds like, from, from, like, what we heard that there isn't not, not much coming from Sony and sounds like sounds something we didn't yeah. talk about yet yeah, is, think, uh, is the uh, Project Morpheus that they announced back at, what, CES? Um, yes. it's, it's, it's like, I think a lot of Sony State of Stage Time will go to PlayStation Now and uh, Project oh. Morpheus. <laughs> but, 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 like, if, if they, they they were to win, they'd have to, like, really shock us, like, with a lot of games. But, but like, uh, as of right, right now, I, I kind of, kind of think Microsoft may have the upper hand. They, they got it. Microsoft's gonna probably have to run double time to make right. up for a lot of mobs. Uh, my prediction so, so. for who wins E3. Um, there's two types of winning in E3, and no one ever does that. I'm not gonna take the diplomatic way out. I'm gonna just say say what they are. You win from the fan standpoint, and you win from the sales standpoint. There's a difference. Just because you, your fans are happy doesn't mean that you're going to go out and sell 10 million you know, systems. And just because that you sell a lot doesn't mean that your fans are happy. From who wins E3 overall? It's so hard betting against Sony. It's like it's like the Miami Heat right now. Like, I can't bet against them. But I'm going to go... I'm going to say Microsoft wins. Um, and I'm going to say Microsoft wins only because of this reason. Because they're behind and they're desperate. They're gonna and, try they got, hard. and they have a new guy who is a complete tryhard and he wants to win. And I respect it. Uh, Sony fans are going to win regardless because we're going to get our games. But from a, from a standpoint of showmanship, the people who are going to be on the stage, the amount of games that we'll see, the amount of surprises and the amount of all factors, the shock and all that we will see, I think we'll get it from Microsoft. And in order of who wins, I think it's Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo. I think that's the way it's going to go. I think Sony comes in a close second, but I think that Microsoft is just going to announce that one thing or those five games or those amount of games that are just going to have people like, yo, this shit is going to be crazy. I have to get an Xbox One. So, I'm rolling with Microsoft this E3, but I'll tell you right now, I will not be completely surprised if they come out and just dud. They just come out and just lay a goose egg and just don't do shit. But, I'm picking them. Sony's going to still have a good conference. Nintendo's going to have a good direct. But, from a complete package, the, the showmanship, the people who are presenting it, the games, the shock and awe, I think it goes to Microsoft. I think they, they definitely get it. So two for Microsoft. What about you, sons? So, uh, hmm. All right. I'm going on the tryhard factor. Let's see. Microsoft is going to have to do the tryhard mode. They're going to have to because it's like they did so bad last year. I think they were the, I don't know. I don't know which one was worse, Nintendo not for not having a conference and the Cranky Kong thing or, you know, Microsoft and I don't know, dude. Um, ooh, bro, you're gonna have both gonna be trying. I don't know, it's really hard to tell, but ugh, if I had to pick one, I think Sony's gonna, yo, don't think Sony's not gonna go try hard mode either, bro. Uh, you see what, you see that campaign they're doing? They're seriously marketing E3 more than anything else, dude. They're the only one out of the three that actually bought out theaters so they can invite people for free to witness. I guess the humiliation or something. I, well, it could be themselves, or it could be some. I mean, the, the other companies. I don't know. Uh, they want people to see this. They're going out of the way so people don't miss this. 
And, you know, I never seen this before from any other company. I mean, is there a reason why they're investing so much for this E3? Is there going to be something at this particular E3 that they want people not to miss? You know, I don't know. I, I, this is like, and we haven't heard anything from them. All we know is, you know, it's going to be on the floor. But, you know, there, there could be something that's going to be brought up. And, you know, I don't want to say Sony's not going to win. Because, I don't know, they're not saying, they're just so quiet. It's so quiet. It's, it's scary. It's, it's that kind of like that... The yeah. calm before the storm. Silent killers. Yeah, yeah, it's the calm before the storm, and that's what Sony's doing. It's like we don't know what's going on, but you know, obviously, you know that Microsoft is gonna like they're gonna dish out, and then you know, you, Nintendo. We already saw their lineup; they got incredible franchises coming out. You know, but I mean, I think it's it's already too late for the Wii U. Like people already invested onto the the proper eighth gen. You know, they're, they're, people already invested into their eighth gen consoles. And, you know, they already have that fan base already built onto it. You know, Nintendo is just going to cater to the uh, people who, the few people, the handful of people that support Nintendo. And you know what, they're going to, they only buy their own franchises. They have, they don't, the Nintendo fans don't support third party games. They don't. Uh, you can see it in third party title sales on the Nintendo. It's, it's, they start. So, unless it has like Mario stamped on it or Link or something, kind of like this new, uh, you know, this new game coming out of, uh, for Hy- Hyrule, I mean, I think that's that's the only way they're going to sell it. But dude, overall, man, it's really hard to tell, man. I, I For me to put my money down on something, dude, you know what? I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be just like, even even if it's a losing team, um, you know, my heart's always, you know, my heart's with the company that actually listens. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the only company that listened to me as a gamer all this time that actually, you know, catered to what I needed, and, uh, I mean, I gotta say, you know, PlayStation's been there, bro, so, I mean, <laughs> but, hey, hey, I, I, I only go to the company that actually provides, bro, they don't provide the stuff that, uh, they don't provide the games, and, sorry, man, I'm not gonna be there, dude, and they're, they're gonna try to make me use some type of peripheral I don't want, you know, I'm glad PlayStation goes at, you know, it's an option for me to use it, I don't like being forced to use a camera, you know, to use my device, but, um, <laughs> honestly, bro, like, uh, I can't, man. I know I can't. I can't pick a uh, overall winner, but for me, uh, my support is with PlayStation. I hope they do good because that's a pl- that's a system I'm planning on getting. I haven't gotten a PS4 yet, but uh, you know, hopefully, uh, I mean, so far I'm liking a lot what's on the on the PlayStation so far, and I look forward to seeing what's gonna be announced at C3. All so right. So, so you're back in PlayStation, okay? I'm back in PlayStation. What about you, Jin? Me. I don't really know who's actually going to win, but I'm siding with PlayStation because I really like their PS4. It's a really great system and all that, and some of the stuff that I actually want to play would comes out on there, and I'm really interested in the Vita right now, and the... PlayStation camera, because after I get my TV back up and running, then I plan on buying a camera and messing with all the alternate reality stuff they have on there, which is really cool, and I'm probably going to buy a Vita whenever I get back from E3, because they've already got at least four or five games on there that I want to play, so, and they're coming out with a lot more games, so I have to go with Sony. Okay. So it looks like it's half Microsoft, half PlayStation. Um, like I said earlier for myself, I am going to be the odd one out. I am leaning towards Nintendo. Um, again, if they got a lot of rumored stuff coming up, and if even half of it is true for me, they win. Uh, Microsoft, I think they're going to bring the game announcements this time. They are going to have a good list of exclusives. They're not going to drop the ball like they did the last E3. With Sony, and Gamer brought up a really good point about this, and I meant to talk about it, but I just I totally forgot about it. And with Sony, I see them splitting their, their conference along too many directions. They're covering five systems, basically. They're covering the PS3, the PS4, the PlayStation Vita, Project Morpheus, and they're also going to talk about PlayStation now, though that integrates with the other four. So, 
I can see them spending a good chunk of time on each of those things, and who knows if they'll get in-depth enough with any of those to really impress people. With Microsoft, we've seen when the 360 came out, they kind of dropped the Xbox original. Now the Xbox One's out. They're not really playing up the Xbox 360 that much. So I'm guessing the bulk of their conference is going to be about the One. With Nintendo, we know all they're going to talk about is pretty much the Wii U and the 3DS. So you're going to get more in-depth coverage of those systems. I would say this year, I hope I'm wrong, but I would guess that PlayStation's going to have the weakest conference. Nintendo is probably going to take it. So... That's our show. That's what we think. Half is two fifths for Microsoft, two fifths for Sony, one fifth for Nintendo. Uh, if you like our show, you think we should talk about anything specific, let us know in the comments section. We're going to head and upload this soon for you. Uh, hopefully, get this up before E3. We'll see. Is there anything else anyone would like to say? Any shout outs? Any other uh, quick spiels uh, you would like to talk about? Follow us on Twitter. Yes, you can S-H-A-S-T-L-Y-M-E-D-I-A Gassy Media uh, Check us out We're on PlayStation Home Go to the LGAS We're group one there And we're all in there I host Anime Night And It's a great night If you come through It's Thursday 9.30 10.30 p.m. Every Thursday We do it Gassy Media Tweet us Follow us Retweet us On YouTube Go to the LGAS Also uh, Gassy Studio Is our studio team so make sure to support us. We'll be doing this every month. So whenever the biggest news comes out, we'll discuss it once every month, man. Mm-hmm. All right, and that is our show. Have a good one. We'll see you next. Well, actually, we'll see you after E3. Yep. There you go, out. guys. Bye. <laughs> <Thank> Bye. <you. laughs>